Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Out of respect to everybody that was here at 6 o'clock. Uh, my name is Raul Lopez, and I'm an engineering manager with this, uh, TBW in City of Fort Worth. I oversee the design and construction of the thoroughfares in Fort Worth, you know, the four six-lane roadways. And this is one of them, University Drive. This is the uh, pre-construction community meeting for University Drive Improvements Phase 1. There will be Phase 2, and Mark is going to go, Mark, our PM is going to go over those details in a second. I want to remind everybody that there's a sign-up sheet towards the back if you want to sign up now or maybe towards the end, but don't forget to sign, sign in. And then there's also a comment cards if you want to write down your comments. Um, and there's also a brochure on how to download the My Fort Worth app or FW app, which is pretty handy in reporting any kind of issues, whether it's university or anywhere else in the city. Um, so I'm going to do some introductions. I'm going to start with our Interim Assistant Director over Capital Delivery, Martin Phillips. Uh, with us also is our Interim Director, Lauren Prier. And then um, we have Aaron Freaky with Cobb Henley. They are the design engineers. I have Jeff Allen, who is our communication specialist responsible for putting all this together. And then with us, our project manager is Mark McCoy. He's with Frisson Nichols, but he's a contract project manager for the city of Fort Worth. So with that, I'm going to leave, leave it up to Mark to get started. Okay. All right. Thank you, Raul. Um, I'm going to kind of, I think this will work so I can see you all and see the screen and see my notes at the same time. Um, so thank you, everyone, for being here live and in person. I guess uh, as we come out of COVID, it's nice to see people in real life. Um, I'm, the, I'm the project manager, and uh, we're going to show you tonight, among other things, what University Drive is going to look like in the near future. So here we go. This is, we're going to give you a little bit of background, and this is a lot of this is courtesy of Lauren, by the way. But uh, th this is this is not just a one piece of this project. There's uh, you can see there's several phases in the works. Phase one and two. Phase one is coming first. Phase two is a is a little trailing a little behind and then uh, down south is going to be the, the next piece of this but it's a it, we're thinking of it as a corridor and not just an individual project just so you know so about five years ago the fort worth community design center completed a corridor and gateway strategy study on university drive and made recommendations for improvements um, these university projects are the result of those recommendations the corridor story study stretches from the Trail Drive to West Canty Street near TCU. You can see that on the screen. <clears throat> Phase one and two uh, are only a portion of the entire corridor, so, so there will be future phases. So, the reason we need this project um, is that University Drive welcomes over five million visitors every year. The existing roadway has a wide and unwelcoming highway feel, so our project intends to make this corridor the gateway to Fort Worth's cultural attractions. Um, and that's stated, we stated basically in a different way on these bullet points, but uh, you get the idea if you've ever driven up and down University Drive, so. Here's a picture of the limits of this particular project. You can see uh, Rosedale on the north and Riverfront on the south limit. Um, and it does include Old University. Okay, the scope of work consists of installing consistent street lighting, replacing the sanitary sewer <clears throat> in one portion, uh, installing pedestrian safety elements and installing uh, new medians with left turn bays, as well as uh, milling and overlaying the whole stretch. And that's new asphalt pavement, in case you don't know that terminology. Another piece of the scope for this phase is uh, improving, uh, installing new bus stop facilities and wayfinding signage. Uh, Trinity Metro is actually going to install the bus stop shelters, but we're putting in the concrete pads. 
<clears throat> Here's a satellite view, and uh, in case you didn't know already, this area has a very car-centric car feel to it. It's not really very pedestrian friendly or pretty to look at, so we're going to try to change all that with this project. Okay, this slide shows the overall phase one concept. Uh, after this, we'll get into close-ups at, at, at different pieces of the job. But you can see that we're installing a narrow solid median throughout the whole limits with various left turn lanes. And hopefully you can, you can see that on the, from where you're sitting. But um, the median is the, the tan shading here. The sewer is the green. The red are the crosswalks. And uh, I guess it's obvious these are traffic signals. So the signal is existing. That signal is new. Okay, here's the north end, starting at West Rosedale. <clears throat> uh, you can see, the again, the sidewalks and the median and the sewer. Uh, just so you know, the width of the sidewalk varies from four to six feet, depending where it is and how much room we had to work with. Uh, right away was kind of limited, so uh, Ideally, we would, we would put it in shared paths for wider paths for bikes to share with pedestrians, but there just wasn't enough right of way in this area. So we're, we're doing what we can. Uh, again, here, here's, as we move a little bit further south, here's where uni old university ties into university. Um, again, crosswalks are red. A little information here, the, uh, the northern crosswalk here at old university was limited just to due to safety and visibility concerns. Uh, we will have ADA compliant curb ramps and stamped concrete co uh, crosswalks at these uh, intersections just to uh, make it safer and, and prettier. Um, the existing signal will be replaced with a new powder coated black signal to kind of uh, up the aesthetic quotient a little bit. All right, this shows the improvements south of Old University including continuous median on um, to all the way to Collinsworth. And again, the crosswalks are red, the sidewalks are blue, uh, and we're putting in new curb ramps also at this intersection. Uh, and, and again, the traffic signal poles will be the powder-coated black ones. And Mark, there's, there's also landscape in the islands. Oh, right, yeah, that's what this, the multicolored section right here and we'll talk about a little bit more about that later but there there are where we could we put uh, some landscaping areas all right so in case any of you don't already know this uh, the re this former residence in is being redeveloped uh, the de developer is called trademark and uh, so we've been coordinating with them coordinating with them on this project and uh, <clears throat> so there will be a, a signal installed for the future. There will be a driveway coming out of their development. So as part of this job is, this, is the signal for that future driveway. So um, if you see action there, that's what's going on. <clears throat> okay, talk about old university. The idea is, is to right size this roadway to accommodate everybody. And that means uh, providing two 11-foot lanes, a bike lane buffer, a bike lane, and a parking lane. And that's, those numbers are called out right here uh, in the small print, <laughs> but uh, that is the idea. That's the only place on this job where there are bike lanes because we couldn't fit them anywhere else. Yes, sir? Are you open to questions now? Can, you, can, we, can we hold them till the end, please? Please, thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, I can flip back through and, and take care of your question. Um, all right, uh, just to reiterate, there, there's no hard improvements uh, on the pavement on the old university, only pavement markings. And we're also just adding sidewalks as shown in blue just to uh, kind of fill in the gaps and connect to the TRA trails. Okay, here's, uh, here's uh, zoomed-in views of the, uh, the landscaping that Raul pointed out before. 
and uh, the landscaping consists of bands of plants and grasses of different coloring that can vary naturally with the seasons. Uh, we have specimen pictures on the next slide. Uh, the landscape islands will be surrounded by brick pavers, light tan tone, similar to this rendering. And of course, there will be irrigation installed also. And all those landscaping improvements have been coordinated with parks and uh, recreation department. All right, I'm just gonna read the names of these for you, for any of you who are interested in the landscaping. If we have specific questions, I can go back and really get into the details. But uh, so we have uh, Four Nerve Daisy, Pink Skull Cap, Desert Flamenco, Hesperello, uh, Side Oats, Grama, and Little Blue Stem. So these are all, the idea is to make them all Texas native plants that give us some color and are drought tolerant and uh, that's it in a nutshell, but we can go back and talk about that more later if you are interested. Okay, so here we are to the, uh, to the cost slide. Construction, 3.4 million. Overall funding is, add, those, add that up, but uh, coming from the 2018 bond program, and there's some water and sewer money in here too, obviously, because that the sewer is being replaced as part of this job. Everything beyond the construction is what it costs to buy easements, do the engineering, do the permitting, uh, manage the project, et cetera. So that's how your money is being spent. Here we are to talk about the schedule. The right of way is we have one easement remaining that is uh, part of a deal with Trademark that I mentioned. One little piece for a bus stop that is almost done. Um, utilities are in the process of being cleared right now. There's like one spot left on that too. Uh, and construction start has not been finalized yet. We are still discussing that, but uh, it, it will be, somewhere towards the end of this year and that we're scheduled to be exactly a year duration from whenever we start so let's just take the opportunity to maybe get some impact uh, input sure, on that sure, i mean yeah. we, we were thinking about starting november but we're thinking it's approaching the holiday season so we'd rather put it up until february after the stock show if that's uh, sort of the consensus uh, if, if you guys get it done. You know, have any <laughs> Does anybody, is anybody opposed to that concept of starting in February versus starting in November? It's going to be a calendar year. Does it matter if we've got construction during the stock show or whatever this year versus next year? Yeah, we'd rather start in February. Yeah. We might be able to accelerate the construction Not just duration. Not but any of those events. Any of the events that we're talking about. There's going to be a lot of events in them. In, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It's going to impact one way or another. Right. But we'd rather start in February, yeah. Start, get it done? Yeah. Just okay. Dive in, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, are we work, does anybody care that we're about work, having under construction during the Christmas shopping season? Does that bother Yeah, is there anybody, anybody here from the University <laughs> of Black Village or? I, I run ATs over there and I'd rather not have all the construction going on during November and December. Those are very busy months for us. Yeah, that's what we were headed with it. So we'll, we'll circle back with our management and, and let you guys know, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you for, for the we'll input. get to the slide here where we talk about communication strategies. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then there it is right there. Uh, so we're making a strong effort in this project to, to let you all know exactly what's going on at all times and uh, keep in contact and make ourselves available. So, but here, here's kind of the details. Obviously we're meeting tonight here at the zoo. Um, the plans to have monthly website updates, and there's there's a there's a link here in the presentation, and this will be, uh, I guess, how do we publish this? They can't see this presentation, but uh, we'll have the video link. Um, we're recording the presentation, and, and we'll put that video on the project page. Okay. It'll be on YouTube too, if anyone. Okay. Knows. Uh, there, we also have a text, text message alert system uh, that you can subscribe to by scanning this 
code or just texting hello to the phone number shown here. And I can, if anybody needs that, I can read it out loud if you're, anybody's taking notes. Um, so that number, that um, service is down right now because apparently their server is down in Florida, um, South Florida. But we, we anticipate it back, being back up uh, December. Probably next November at the, early, at the latest. Okay. So you can summer. write the number down, but you can't sign up yet because their server is down. So just hold, out, hold on to the number and try to sign up probably mid-November. I'm sorry, mid, uh, early November? Uh, early November. Early November. They got hit by a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll also be having monthly on-site construction meetings that you're welcome to attend. Uh, I envision this happening like right before our meeting with the contractor, like show up, voice your concerns. Uh, it's just, what is happening here? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, new, new equipment to me. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, we'll publish when those are going to be and where and, uh, you know, open mic night, I guess. Uh, the, ne the, the next uh, thing we're trying to include is quarterly city news updates, and there will be a six-month mailed construction update. So, uh, like I said, really trying hard to keep you all in the loop. Talking about access plans for pedestrians and vehicles. Uh, particularly for businesses like ETs during construction. Um, in the contract, uh, there are restrictions on the number of lanes that can be closed at certain times, okay? Um, in particular, one lane will have to be closed uh, in each direction to build a new median, obviously, because it's right in the middle of the street. Um, but we will, we'll, we'll keep the construction to one section of median at a time so the entire stretch isn't isn't closed at once when we're building the sidewalks there will be alternate routes for pedestrians that are uh, accessible and we'll make sure those are signed uh, properly and that there's advance notice given uh, driveway access will be maintained or we'll give you alternate access so you can always get there's always a way to get where you're trying to go And at the bottom here is my name, again, and my phone number, my personal cell phone number. So there you go. That's me. I think Raul mentioned already, but there is the MyFW app that uh, it really does work. And it's, if you don't have it, I would recommend getting it. So that's available in uh, uh, Google Play or uh, what's the iPhone? Apple Store. Apple Store. Yeah. Have you taken into account the spring break in March? Yes. <laughs> do we have a copy of that, Mark? I don't yeah, think we do. Um, I thought I'd, I didn't read it, I guess. Um, it was listed. Okay. And one other question. No. Will, will we assume Seventh Street will be finished by the time? Yes, we will be finished, yes. <laughs> we know that for a fact. <laughs> we don't want to start these until Seventh Street is finished. Good. Yes. Oh, what happened here? What is the update on 7th Street? So construction is to be complete, substantially completed by November 4th. Um, and uh, they're working on the median between Norwood and University, so just the last little block. And then the rest, what's left. OK, thank you. What's left from there is uh, finishing the landscape on the, on the median, irrigation, and then mill and overlay, and striping. So and would the landscaping be in? Yeah, everything should be in by November 4th. Yeah. I think there was, um, I'm looking for the list of uh, events that we're trying to avoid. Sorry, I got kicked out of my presentation here. It may be towards the there end. There we go, there we go. Colonial Golf Tournament, Fort Worth Zoo, spring break with the kids. Um, TCU home football games, the Zoo Run, Mayfest, Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, and I think there's a couple more too, but uh, yes, we're thinking about all that and, and trying to minimize the impact to all that stuff. So, so notice this says construction will be restricted, that it won't stop, but it will be restricted. If we need to stop for some reason, uh, we'll talk to the contractor, but we, we'd rather not stop, but it will be restricted to how many lanes can be uh, worked on at a time. 
Thank you. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that was basically the end of my slide. So now I think I know the turquoise shirt had a had a question. What what was it on again? I'm sorry. Right here. There hasn't been any significant so changes ever since. Placement of medium, things yeah. like that. Everything is the same information. It the is same. pretty much the same. Yes, sir. All right. Now, on the old university, that's not a solid medium <coughs> metal. Is that just a, okay. Just it's a stripe, a center stripe, yeah. All right. And then sidewalks will be on both sides of the, uh, both sides of the road. Is that? No, okay. that's, yeah. we're only going to have sidewalks along the, I guess you would call that the, West east side or north side? side. West side. The west side. west side. The side closer to the river. We're only sidewalks are designated by the blue lines here. So there's only gonna be sidewalks up to that um, entrance to I believe there was some development there and it's no longer there. And you see the red skip line? That's a crosswalk to get people from the north side or the east side to the west side. There's already sidewalk all the way to uh, the hotel. And then that's right, where we right start the sidewalk it again. Exists, right? yeah. so. so where the blue picks up, that's where we start sidewalk again in front of the hotel. And then, so there's not going to be a sidewalk along the site closer to the river because that's all going to be redeveloped, and that's in the works. So we don't want to build a sidewalk and then the redevelopment will tear it all off. Right, right. Yeah. And then traffic. Uh, I understand traffic is now going to be only one way out. From the zoo entrance? No, it's two ways. Yeah. It's that would be northbound, this is southbound. Yeah, it's still gonna be two ways. It's one lane each way. Yeah. And a bike lane. I don't think she was talking about on the cul de sac of Old University. I think she was talking about on the other side in Trinity Park. Coming out of there's a bridge there at the end of Old University that enters Trinity Park. I'm not you're familiar going, with. Going yeah. The cul de sac is open at the end, and you can get into Trinity. Right, correct. There. Yes. Is that remaining the same? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That? That's not changing. Okay, I understand it is. Okay, then we need to coordinate with uh, our traffic guys. Yeah, but there's yeah. only going to be one way out of the park. Okay. The road itself will remain two way, but coming out of the park, you can only uh, leave the park. Okay. Yes. No, still the same amount of lanes. That's why the median has to be so narrow because, uh, yeah, they won't, we won't reduce the amount of travel lanes. No. Now, 7th Street used to be two lanes on each side and then a center lane. Um, it's still two lanes. It just has a median instead of a center lane, but you still have the ability to turn just like you used to. And this is going to be similar. Um, this, the, where the center line, the center, I'm sorry, where the uh, median is going to go, it's now the center lane, the common center lane. So that's going to be a concrete solid median. And you're still going to have the ability to turn left at the median openings, at the signals. Yeah, protect that left, yeah. I've got a question. Sure. Is there going to be a bike lane on the university? No. no. I there. wouldn't get on that thing. <laughs> but why do you have a bike lane running on the old university feeding down? That's the only place it feeds down to, and I don't understand that. So the idea is that, so for example, former residents inside, that's going to be a hotel, residences, and commercial. There's also uh, colonial apartments out 
to the west. Oh, no, they're, the they're, idea is and it's, it's connectivity to the Trinity yeah. Trails, yeah. But I'm just saying that, you know, I'd rather see the back lane over here and y'all widen the one that's going down the river. But I know you have to spend your right. money where you're spending your money. We're also trying to use the bike lane as a means of transportation. As a what? As a means of transportation. Uh, we're just trying to use bikers or bicycles as a means of transportation to go shopping if you want to go to University Park Village to go have lunch at, uh, you know, whatever you want to well, go have lunch. Go it's not just recreational. So you that, that's. want to go down by the river if you're going to go there and want a bicycle. That's all I'm saying. That's, yeah. Right, so that's why we're putting the bike lane here so you can go to University Park Village. You wouldn't be able to do that if you if we stayed on the, tr on the river trails. Yeah, Whatever. yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's the concept. Yes, sir. Uh, will the median prevent people from turning west into shopping spaces along the University Drive? See a lot of left turns out there. Right. Uh, I think we're <laughs> and that's, that's part of the... Uh, concept of the project or the idea of the project is to limit those turn lanes right. that have proven to be very dangerous. There's, okay. there's been traffic studies that have demonstrated that you know, it's a high injury corridor because of those turn lanes, the mutual turn lanes, and that's one of the concepts of the projects, to limit the amount of turn lanes at, say, at the signal, concentrate up at the signal where they're protected. And there's two more um, single direction turn lanes towards the north. Uh, you will be able to do a U-turn? No. You'll be able to do a U-turn at the at signal, signal, at the traffic yeah. signal, yes. But not at the other turning point. I'm sorry? But not at the other turning point? No, at the other turning points, it would be too tight of a movement, no. That's not allowed. That's just a single direction left turn lane. And then we expect for the increases in population density. So we, uh, for, say for sure, there at the former residence camp, how many uh, units do we expect there? We don't. We don't, don't have, have that information. That That's question. private development. It's not part of your study, right? Uh, we, we, took it, we took it in consideration for the study, but we, we don't have that information at this time. That has changed over the years. The city's got the information. Well, the city might, but yeah, this, this group doesn't have it. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we don't have it, yeah. It's the sort of thing you can get us tomorrow. I'm sorry? We can get it from you tomorrow, but couldn't we? We, we can do research. We're in conversations with Trademark, the developer, um, and they, they should be able to tell us that, what that number is. You can tell us the max that's allowed by the code. Now. We, we can do that, yeah. <coughs> okay. Can you, did you have a uh, common card? Can you put that in your common card yes. or give me your name or something? Right, and then at the, uh, there may be some more public information at the other end, uh, besides the former medical offices uh, along the University Drive. I'm not sure where you're, I'm not sure the location. You're yeah. talking about. Are you talking about old University Drive? Oh, you're talking about that vacant lot? Here? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah. And there's more of those there towards the river. What population density do you change to expect? We can chase those answers. <laughs> yeah, we can chase those answers. If you'll just I provide. Don't think there's anything, I don't think there's anything proprietary about what you've done with the, about the plan. They are now and revoking uh, privacy for the developer. I don't, so. I don't I don't think it is, no. So we just don't have that information right there at this time. Well, yeah. Tomorrow's fine. Actually next week. I, fine. Yeah, I can't promise that I'll give it to you tomorrow, but I'll give it to you in a timely manner. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. And what is your name, sir? I am Charles Dreyfus. We are tomorrow today. Okay. Uh, and this Oh I'll just get your email here in a second. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, you touched on traffic a little bit, and, and Mr. Travis brings up a good point. This will undoubtedly, undoubtedly restrict a little bit of traffic on university. And you talking about the construction or the ultimate? I'm talking about just in general. Mm -hmm. um, just with the, the, the turn lanes already get backed out into the left lane of northbound and southbound traffic. When, right. there, when there's a full turn lane for them, it already gets backed out there. We're going to add all the stuff from Trademark, and Mike was talking about stuff from Old University. 
when we had this meeting in 2019, y'all had not done the traffic study yet. Have y'all done the traffic study to figure out where all these cars are going to go? Carl. And where, and where the, you know, we, we talked about last time, people that are in the Apple store that want to go northbound, let's say. Um, is that line for that light is going to get, as the only exit northbound from that shopping center is going to be crazy. And, we talk, and the last time we talked about, oh, just go on Rogers Road, which is already bottlenecked. Right. We, we did a traffic study, right, Carl? And yes, we did. I think the level of service was service kind of was constant. It, it, it was constant. It was the level of service C that came through during congestion time for such a shopping center. It would go down to D, which yeah. means we have a little longer delay to go through. But we tried to make it as, make, make the exit for that, uh, that intersection to be as consistent flow as possible. Holidays are exceptions. Carl, uh, holidays are exceptions, but daily traffic that, as they have, it works fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what any of that level C and D or any of that means. I just mean, like, right now you can drive on Rogers Road at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and it's backed up from the bridge all the way beyond the entrance to University Park Village. And now that becomes one of your major routes of egress out of University Park Village to go northbound. And it seems yeah. like we're adding. Don't forget, there's going to be a signal there which doesn't exist today. So you see Rogers. On Collinsworth? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, there's going right. to be a new but signal. You've got to go out of Collinsworth, down out of the back road of University Park Village, over to Collinsworth. Right, but you have a lot of backup on Rogers because there's a signal now and you've got to wait for a gap from northbound, southbound University. You won't have to wait for that gap. You'll have a signal protected left. Right. So where, why is the backup from Rogers from if you're here right now today, you're trying to turn northbound. I'm not talking or about there. I'm talking about out of the university, out of the Apple Store parking lot. At the other, at the existing stoplight. Midway. Yeah, there's no stoplight there. Midway in between those two. But now that's only a right lane, which is a lot safer. Can we pull a map here? All right. I guess to maybe right here. Or? You talk about here. That's the, that's the stoplight I'm saying that is already congested. Right. And people going. You're going to add those cars going from the Apple Store. They're going to go. Uh, that's west towards Banana Republic and all that stuff, and then they're going to have to get in that line. And last time we, we met, you talked about that we would just want them to go out of the back of UTV through to Rogers Road. It is already incredibly congested. So Rogers Road is already congested, right? Yes. And I'm telling you, it's congested today because you don't have a signal there. That's enough. I'm not, it, not it's going northbound. Rogers Road is the is, is I'm west sorry, this is calling north. I'm sorry, this is calling north. Kennesworth. Yes. Rogers, Rogers, Rogers Road. Yeah, Rogers Road runs runs down this way. Yeah. So you get an 18 wheeler that's trying to go east on I-30 on Rogers Road, and it will back up traffic well beyond yeah. the University Park Village. Entrance. Did we look at that, Carl? More traffic. Did we look at that? Or have we looked at that? Rogers Road wasn't looked at because the, the, the focus was to, to, to uh, the safety issues along the University Drive. Well, right. I, I, if I could interject, I think that that if you're if you're one of your major traffic plans is to divert traffic to Rogers Road, that Rogers Road traffic has to be yeah, taken into account. Well, but it, that, well, that, I'm just going by what y'all said in the 2019 meeting, which was to divert traffic to University Park Village out make of. The that is right. an option. Diverting to Rogers Road is an option, so, but to make the university safe for all users. That's yeah. not what I meant. And I, what I mean is one of the options okay. for alleviating traffic with this plan was to divert traffic. Can you not get to Collinsworth from Rogers Road? I think you can. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is the bottleneck point that exist today that will not exist tomorrow. So all of that traffic is rerouted. You, you have to compare improved situations with existing conditions. Existing causes a bottleneck because you have this big bottleneck here. Traffic, traffic diverts itself when you, you know, it's just like everything in life, right? You know, when you have an obstacle, you, you, find, you find another way. So traffic reroutes and traffic engineering accounts for that. I mean, yeah, but I mean, so we'll take it from, app, from Apple Store to trying to get northbound from East. What was your question? You won't be able to go, go, to go, to go, to go out to that stop. You'll have to go out to that to the signal and turn around. Yeah, and that's that's you know that's what happens when you're trying to balance safety and mobility. We we cannot sacrifice safety to 
to you know, keep mobility the way it is. So we have to balance those things out. I'm not, yeah, I'm not asking you to sacrifice the mobility. I'm just asking, I mean, I mean, I'm asking to not sacrifice as much mobility and figure out a good way for people to still be able to move. I, I already, I drive, university drive north and south several times a day. And, try, and I've now gotten in the habit of taking the right road. I just can't imagine how much more this is going to add to Rocky Road. And, and, you know, it may be that a lot of traffic that goes down university might take, you know, Forest Park or something. Traffic, traffic, traffic just goes different routes. It's when you, when you, yeah. when you limit the, fl the flow. since 2018 bond package, you know, prices have just gone through the roof. How is that accounted for in this project now paying for it in 2023 and 2024? So price, I mean, construction costs did increase. Uh, construction cost was estimated at the time to be about 2.4, 2.5, and it's now about a million more. It's not a whole million because the water department in, added scope that wasn't included at sure. the time. So it's about $700,000 more, but it, it's funded. Still from that same bond? From the same bond. Residuals from that bond. We're about to wrap up that bond program, okay. so whatever wasn't used, okay. some of it went to this project. Yep. One second, I got a question in the back okay. corner there. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, if you want an example of how, you know, of, 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 you know, why I've got this trust, you know, when they restriped Hemp Hill, several people pitched conniptions about there will be a traffic apocalypse. Guess what never came? So I trust this plan has taken enough into account to make sure that won't happen here, right? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for that. Yeah. That comment. Give him a chance first. Sure, go ahead. Sure. I think we can okay, we I mind. saw this about four years ago. Uh, there was going to be a temporary something for trademark to have a term behind the, the uh, Silver Fox restaurant. Is this going to be the as delivered day one, or is there right. still a temporary? That's no longer trade? needed, so that's that's out of the picture. Okay. Yes. And the other was that they had to move their entrance to that old residence inside by a certain day. They'll they'll just move it whenever they're ready to develop that. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a private improvement. So we're just prepping the intersection for a signal to serve that driveway, but they'll just move whenever they're ready. Uh, so the last time we met with them, they were about to start construction right now, but you can see nothing's going on. So that's what happens with development. And for all I know, that development may not happen. So development is market driven. It's not a public, it's not public work, so. So that on that turn lane coming across the bridge, um, if you're headed northbound, north right here, yes, from the is that a left turn lane from the zoo, or is that that's a left turn pocket? Right, yeah, that's back, back up. What's that? Oh, here. Yes. What is yeah, that? I'm sorry. That is the left turn to go into riverfront. This pocket here is the re left turn to go into riverfront. I'm sorry, that didn't go away. That's dangerous. I mean, I know now there's a stoplight. So there will be a stoplight. And whenever this is red for these people, right. then these people will have a gap to get in. That's what I keep saying. This makes a right. big difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and, and just so you know, level of service C is what's accepted in most roadways that you're driving in today, except, except the freeway. Um, so it's when when we design roadways, we don't shoot for level level of service A. Level of service A is you know a car every 500 feet. You don't want to design a road for that that uh, little traffic. You want to design a road that's sort of keeps a keeps a balance between cost and service. 
So level of service C, which is what we're going to have after the project is constructed, is acceptable, and that's what we shoot for. That's what the traffic engineering profession shoots for, I should say, not just the city of Fort Worth. So I, I drove this road, I figured it out about like six times today, uh, and it's really busy. Are you telling me the throughput capacity of this road is going to be improved? Yes. I mean, not improved. It's going to stay about the same. Level of service C to level of service C, right, Carl? Judging over the last five to eight years, it is a whole lot busier. And ever since Forest Park was redone, a lot of traffic has moved over to University Drive. So uh, I, want, I want to emphasize this. This is not a capacity increasing project. This is, this is a safety improvement project. I experience the capacity decreasing. I understand it's a very difficult situation, yeah. very challenging. We, we, there's no room for us to grow another lane. That's, that's the challenge. Yeah. Lane, yeah. but, but the capacity of the road is a real problem. And frequently, I see traffic backed up all the way from down at Rosedale to the bridge on the weekday. All the way to the bridge, this entire road, three lanes wide, yeah. is backed up. So what can be done to increase the ability of the roadway to move that traffic through? The I big think stop gap, like you said, the biggest stop gap on northbound traffic along the Columbus Route. It's not the through traffic, it's the right turn speeding on the interstate. And the and right at right at that intersect at, at that interchange right there, tech stop will not stop the off ramps because that's more of a safety issue because they're going seventy miles mm -hmm. an hour and if there's a backup on, on the ramp on there, so they have more through movements getting on to university and they stop the university. That's why it backs up. I'm not following where you're, can you explain where you're going? Sure, for certainly. Sure. Can you see it well? You on? have ramps right here for 30. And you have off ramps that they come through. They are not going to stop the off ramps because if you back up on the on the 30, in other words, hold them with at the light, you're going to have stoppages on the interstate. It's far more dangerous to stop the interstate than it is to stop this road. So that's why they have more green time than the ramps do. And that's where your backups occur. Now, if you eliminated the interchange there completely, you'd have through movement all the way through. What you're saying, I don't understand how, you're saying the ramp will come the freeway? The off ramps. Off ramp. Coming here West and coming down. here on the opposite side of the university, those have have more significant green time than the university does going north and south. So, so text that gives them preference to be able to get onto universities so they don't back up into the freeway. Into the freeway, into the freeway yeah. And so that stops that, the conflicting that, movement, that which is northbound. Is that, is that yeah. signal right there? It's, it's, it's right there, right below, right before Rosedale. Yeah, this is this is a case study for you know traffic signal congestion and freeway congestion. You have that intersection there, the Chisholm Trail. That's that intersection. That's NTTA. That's NTTA. Chisholm Trail is NTTA, and then the next one over. Intersection that would cause that right turn to stop. Is that is it Chisholm Trail or is it and I thirty interstate there? You got, uh, the, you got the two lanes at four strike turn going south, right. and you have the one lane at the turn. That's right, yeah. Down. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's only the Chisholm Trail. I think it's only Chisholm, Chisholm, Trail. Chisholm Trail, yeah. So it's NTTA. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask one more question? I, I was at the similar meetings to this before West 70 project started. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that everyone has a chance to have input. But that project was supposed to be finished spring and then in the summer and now we're talking about November. So if you all are thinking this project's going to take a year, it's going to be holy hell for us if those other staff are driving. And are we talking about a year? How did the contract how do we get it done and get it over with? Let me let me start by saying this. This is not as complicated as West 70s. Number one, it's a lot shorter. Number two, we're not doing as much as we're doing on West 7th. So on West 7th, we were constructing concrete bike lanes right in the middle of an existing lane. We're not constructing anything within 
you know, the existing three lanes. We're constructing the median in the middle, right, in the existing lectern lane. The other thing is this is not as congested with utilities as West 7th was. West 7th is one of the oldest part of town, right? So it's congested with all utilities uh, right underneath the road. And they were, you know, um, when we were locating the street lights, the brand, the street lights on that product, we were hitting water lines and we were hitting other utilities. It is very, very congested with utilities because, because of the density of the development there. This is not as dense as West 7th is. And the other thing that, uh, cost delays on West 7th was the reaching agreement with the railroad. That is just, just takes too long. Railroads have an upper hand over anybody else because they were here first. And so finally we were able to reach agreement with them. I think it was towards July, end of the summer. And now, and that's, that uh, crossing is now complete, substantially complete. So none of that is gonna happen here. We don't have a railroad crossing. We don't have utilities, that many utilities underneath. Um, we need to talk about making sure that we do SUE on any potential conflicts. I've already told him this in a different, in a different uh, venue. Or, um, so it's not gonna be, this is not as complicated as, as of a project as, as West 7th was. In terms of utilities, conflicts, potential findings while you're doing construction, it's not gonna be that bad. So you and I talked before about, we're not burying, burying utilities, utilities with this. Right now there's- The franchise utilities, no, we're not. Light bulb, light bulb. Correct. That will continue. That will continue, yes. We're gonna have purple lights. I've seen some of those going in. Purple lights, no. <laughs> like you made the, like the, the freeway? Yes. Yeah, I thought about that initially. No, no, no. Street lights. On Parkway. There's, there's and there's, there's one on University Drive. Yeah. That's the other location that they're burning out. Oh, okay. I thought, because I've seen purple lights on, uh, not purple, the bluish, over the new Trinity River Vision Bridges. And those are cool. They're, they're cool blue, I should call them, like, not purple. <laughs> oh really? Well, we should have done purple here. We should have done. You know, I thought about that, but budget. Yeah. Do we have any Sir, more he's had a question for a while yet. now. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Dreyfus. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Oops. Thank you, Mr. Reifus. Yeah, make sure you put your comments on the yes, sir. Submit them, please. So it's peak time, yeah. That's typically how, when the traffic studies are done. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, traffic counts were taken for a week, and we also at the intersections did uh, peak hours to for all the turns that went along um, for an eight-hour period that captured those peak periods. Right. We got the we got the uh, seven-day counts, which gave us the weekday peak hours. And if within those hours, that's when we identify the turns. So that's important. We took counts on the left turns as well. Right. And so that's all accounted for with this design. Right. That's, so, how, that's how the driveways and, and, right. and the left turns were, 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 were targeted because those were the primary ones where the majority of the, the turn, left turns, either on the northbound and southbound, took place. And that's why the meeting was placed 
as it was, based on the traffic volumes they had. Yep. And when was the traffic study done? Traffic study was done in 2019? 2019, I think towards the end of 2019. Yeah. So there's two major developments that are coming in high density in the Coast Seems like it's really going to be impacting the traffic. I want to say without having the uh, benefit of the knowledge, that's that's development is still by a different department. Transportation Public Works has a small portion and it's not our department, our division. I want to say that they're required to do a traffic study before they're permitted, but I, don't quote me on it. I, I would have to. Typically they are, yeah, typically they are. But I don't know if that's the case on a, uh, what we call an established thoroughfare. I can't tell you if they have or not, but that's that would be the requirement. Yeah. I can tell you if they have. I cannot tell you if they have or not, but that would be what I would think. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Tom Simmerly is uh, yeah, and so I can provide that information to you. I'm sorry, I said TPW had to do, they used to be part of TPW, now they're part of development services. Yeah, so that's. Well, could I ask a question regarding traffic Sure. All right, by the railroad track, signing the sidewalks have been completed. And there is an issue about adding more density there in the apartment. And so called having an access from that apartment area to white settlement, is that still? I wouldn't oh, know oh, that either, but I can I can chase down who might be, have an answer for you on that, and that might be Tom. Are you Margaret? Catherine. Catherine. I okay. know Margaret. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I spoke with the Margaret. I'm sorry. <laughs> we had a meeting with Margaret about the same issue. Yeah. They've had that on the news tonight. Oh, really? um, supposedly, they're still working on that exit to White Settlement Road for that development, and they hope that will happen before it goes to council. The zoning commission approves it. Any other questions? Any other questions? Phase two is uh, probably four or five years from now to start construction. Yeah, well, that's still that's in the early phases. It hasn't even been designed. We're just barely uh, engaging a, an engineer on, in the con in contracts. I don't know what the what are, I don't know the timeline for I thirty. Yeah. So then the bridge part and up University Drive won't happen for who knows. That's how future, long. yeah. And I won't be here by then. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's future. Yeah, university phase two is federally funded, so that takes a little longer. Yeah, probably six years from now construction. Okay. Correct. Yeah, and that's what kind of stretches it out. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The university drive goes north from uh, the freeway. Do you anticipate taking parkland for pavement? No, we do not anticipate ta taking not parkland. No, it's yeah, it's not. We don't anticipate that. Uh, it's, again, on university phase two, it's kind of the same scope that we're doing on phase one. We're not widening the road. We're just providing sidewalks, connectivity, crosswalks. Street lights and repaving the road, the existing road. Yeah. So it's not a wine end project. We're not adding lanes. <laughs> Trust me, we deal with the parks department. <laughs> we try to avoid uh, that. <laughs> their job, actually, is not to protect the parks. Their job is to agree with the developments and the engineers. <laughs> so the parks lot no. is not something. That's not the fault we, we deal with. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what did he say? 
Oh, no, that's not the folks that we, we usually deal with. They do protect their parks. Yeah, they do. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, thank you, so, everyone, thank for Thank you very much. Coming tonight. Um, again, Andy. make sure you put your comments in writing and turn them in. Uh, you have a better chance of getting responded to in writing. So thank you for being here. What is your...